You know, one of the reasons my soil is so productive is because I use a lot of worm castings or worm manure. And I harvest that from a bin I made myself. And I love that bin. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you the steps that I took to make it so you can make one for yourself too. You know, gardeners everywhere know that compost is black gold for the garden. But vermicompost or worm castings, well that's the cream of the cream, the best of the best. And farmers pay big bucks to add it to their garden soil. But the cool thing is we can make it at home for free and it's the very best fertilizer we can put into our gardens. Not only that, it reduces the amount of waste going to the curb or the landfill and it couldn't be easier to make. Yeah, now unlike regular composting where you can have a big sprawling pile of it outside, mm. vermicomposting needs to be fairly well contained. And for a lot of people, that means a plastic bin or a tote. You can keep that in your basement, in a pantry. Some people even keep it underneath the kitchen sink. Now for other people, a bin full of garbage and worms is a little too much mother nature inside the house. So we're gonna build our own worm bin. We can make it as large as we want. We'll keep it outdoors. That means even more castings for us. So it's all gonna be safely contained but safely outdoors. I like that. And I also like the fact you're using cedar. Yeah, cedar or redwood, either one's gonna hold up great outside with the weather. Either one is readily available at your local lumber yard. What we don't wanna use though is pressure treated lumber. Right. You know, the chemicals in that stuff is gonna be toxic to our worms. That'll taint the castings and you end up putting those chemicals right in your garden, which you don't want. Now what you could do, if your bin is gonna be protected underneath some sort of an overhang, maybe in a garden shed or a barn, you could build this out of pine and keep the cost down even further. Or what would be super cool, if you've got enough of it, use pallet wood and turn this into a giant repurposing project. I uh, love that, good idea. Nothing complicated here for the lumber. Just a four by four, Ready? some yep. lengths of one by eight, and a few one by fours. Short pieces of 4x4 will be the interior corners of three shallow boxes that will make up the worm bin. The big 4x4s provide the real structure for our boxes and give us something solid to drive long nails into for extra strength. The size of your boxes is up to you. Ours measure about 4 feet by 20 inches, but make sure you make yours all exactly the same. Only one of the boxes, the bottom one, gets a true floor made up of 1x8 planks. You can use this bottom box as a tray to capture the worm's liquid waste with some simple drip pans. You can even cut a hatch into the wall of this bottom box and hinge it to make the trays easier to remove and replace. The other two boxes get a floor made of wire mesh. Buy a big roll of it and cut it to size with tin snips. This allows the worms to move freely from one box to the other and lets the castings fall through as they're made while you keep replenishing the scraps from above. The wire mesh is secured with a handful of screws and washers that are larger than the holes in the mesh. In this worm bin design, the boxes are stackable and interchangeable, so as one box fills with compost, you always have at least one empty bin to add scraps to. The 1x4s become the legs of the bin and help lock each box in place when they're all stacked. The remaining 1x8 planks become a lid for the bin, held together with cross pieces of 1x4s. Add a handle or two to the top to make it easier to work with, and that's all there is to it. Right against this section. Centrally located for you. Yeah, you're not kidding, but there is a method to my madness. Convenience is important, and it's also important that this is in a shady location because worms can't take heat above about 85 degrees Fahrenheit, otherwise they're gonna cook to death. And you don't wanna come out to a bunch of dead worms. So this is a good spot, it's shady. But the other thing is the convenience because it's next to the compost pile, so when I'm bringing ingredients to the compost, I can decide to divert some to the bin here, and then of course the finished product 
goes right there in the garden, so it's the best of all worlds. And I know you do have to pay attention to what actually goes in here from the kitchen. You do, and the same rule of thumb applies to what you would put for compost. The things you really want to avoid are the meats, the dairy, and the grease. But other than that, worms are not picky eaters, so a lot of kitchen scraps, a lot of household waste. In fact, I even brought a bunch to start. So Todd, take that and just dump it in. That's shredded paper, you know, the homework and the junk emails. This is just junk mail from out of the office. Yeah, it is. And the important thing to note about this is uh, the smaller pieces, because the smaller the pieces going in, the quicker it becomes finished product. If you put in just whole pieces of paper and paper towel rolls, it takes them a long time to break that all down. That shredder has gotten them a great head start. So food scraps and, and scraps from the garden, you know, this is just lettuce, but whatever you want to put in there. Maybe if you're vermicomposting inside, you avoid fruit because that can attract some flies, but out here it really doesn't matter. And then again, a lot more cardboard. You know, we can shred this up because as I said, that helps it go faster, but shredding paper, brown paper, a lot of good ingredients here. I'll just So this is a great way to get through some of that stuff that needs to be recycled anyway. <laughs> that's for sure. Just keep it at home. This is what you should do. The most important ingredient of all, you can't have a vermicompost bin without worms. And, these are and they the don't magically of... appear. You have to start them. So I have a neighbor, farmer friend, that donated about two pounds of worms, red wigglers, which is about 2,000 worms. And they will go to work breaking down all of this. They like moisture. So I'll lightly mist them. That's good, Todd. They'll work their way down. They don't like light, so they'll go straight down. But eventually, the whole idea is they, they want to work their way up, correct? They do want to work their way up, and that's what will happen. Once this becomes finished vermicompost, they're still hungry and they need to eat, which is the reason for the top bend. This will be full and they'll be able to easily pass through those openings in the wire to the next bed, which is where I'll have more of this. And then it's just a rotation. You know, I'll harvest from this bin because it'll be pure compost while they're up in the top bin eating and then the whole pattern repeats And then again. you replace them. Yeah. So the empty bin is always the top bin. Right. So that looks great. Those have got to be some happy worms. So it's been about eight weeks since we built this worm bin. And the hardest job for me is keeping these worms fed because they are voracious eaters. So let's take a look in here. It's in the shade so the worms are nice and cool. And judging from all that they eat, I'd say they're pretty darn happy. Okay, so you see food scraps in here and eggshells and you see some shredded paper. One of their favorite things, they just devour this stuff. But what's really cool about this is I can't even keep up with giving them enough food because they break it down so quickly. The plan was to fill this up and then go to the second bin, fill that up with food, and then I would harvest the castings. But I haven't even gotten to that point yet, even though I can do that now because the castings are right here. These are amazing. This is just pure worm manure. And you can see those worms in there. They are as happy as can be. They've multiplied like crazy. But I've got to keep them fed. And so that's what I'm going to do right now. Put the cover back on, and it's back to making super compost, and all those castings, they can go in the garden now at any time. 